So let's imagine it's a dark, clear night and you're lying in the grass somewhere staring up at the skies. What do you see? Well, you see lots of stars. That's maybe right. you see a bit of the Milky Way. Depending on if it's a moonless night, maybe a moon or not. But what, you also notice that, I guess, uh, over time, some the stars and the positions of the stars change. That's right. If you just look up, they all seem to be, like, if Sirius is over there, it's probably still over there a minute later. Yeah. But if you came back an hour later, you'd find it's you Slightly know, over kind of over there That's somewhere. Right. And if I come back and wake up early in the morning, all of a sudden it's on the opposite side of the sky. So, too slowly to see, but still very obvious yeah. over a f even minutes, let alone hours, the stars are always moving across the sky. Yep. So here's a, a planetarium view um, where I've sped this up enormously. <laughs> so you can see the sun setting and you can see the stars moving. So where are we looking at into the sky? Well, here we're in, I'm assuming we're in Canberra, so in the Southern Hemisphere, yep. and we're looking um, fairly southwards. Okay. What we're seeing is the stars appear to be doing circles around a particular point in the sky. Yes. They're rising in the east, setting in the west, and doing circles about a point which in Canberra is about 35 degrees above the southern horizon. That's right. If you're in the northern hemisphere, they'll appear to do loops, loops around the pole star up in the northern horizon. That's right. If you're standing right on the North Pole, they'll appear to do circles around a point directly over your head. Yes. So this is, has been known for all cultures for, since prehistoric times. Yes. And the easiest way to explain it is just to assume that we're standing on the flat earth in the middle here. Yep. And there's a big sphere mm -hmm. out there with stars painted on it. So the idea is this sphere is moving? That's right. So the sphere is rotating around this red axis. So this okay. red axis is a giant hinge yep. and the whole thing is spinning around that. So in the Southern Hemisphere, if we look at the hinge, we will see things apparently doing circles around that. If we look at Polaris in the north, or the north, depending on your view, uh, it's spinning around that. Depending where you are on the Earth, this hinge is at different angles. Yep. Because, of course, the Earth is actually a sphere, not flat. So if you're at the south or north pole, this hinge is directly overhead, so everything appears to move around it. If you're at the equator, the hinge is on the horizon, so things all appear to rise and move over. Yep. So that's the normal pattern of how things move in the sky. Okay. And you can see this with long exposure photographs. So, so here we have a photo pointed towards that hinge, right? Yes, this is pointed towards the south and the southern hemisphere. You get a similar thing in the northern hemisphere if you point towards the north. Yep. And what you do is you just open the shutter of your camera for a long time. And what you see is the stars produce trails as they move. And you can see the circles they're doing around the celestial poles. And so the circles get bigger the further away you are from the pole. That's right, because they've got moving further. And if you point it like east or west, you'll see something more like this. You'll see them all awry moving up. Okay. And so this is actually something you can do even with some modern smartphones. Yes, that's yeah. right. Uh, even with an exposure of like 30 seconds or a minute or something, you'll see <laughs> little bits of arcs. That's right. Um, and if you can, you, you could, for example, do a time sequence where yes. you take hundreds of pictures and then make a movie of all these things moving around. You can around. see it yourself. And if you search on the web, you'll see numerous time exposure movies showing these sorts of things. So this is, don't, take us, don't take our word on this. This is something you can test for yourself. And it's actually quite nice to see and measure, especially as you measure the position relative to where you are on the Earth and see how that pole changes. You can also just lie in your bed and uh, if you look at the window within arm's reach, you could put a marker from, if you keep your head still where a particular star is and then mark it again. Uh, 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, and you'll be able to see the tracks of all these stars. Do yes, you? with my kids the other night, I told them, well, just notice where the, where the constellation Orion is over that tree, and when we come out an hour, look where it is, and sure enough, they realize it wasn't that close to the tree anymore. Yes, so these things actually move. So this is the basic motion of the stars, known since prehistoric times. They're like glued on the inside of a giant crystal sphere, and it's endlessly rotating about these hinges, which are over the North and South Pole. So I guess we're done? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.